Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I am your host, Brian Scott. Today I wanted to dedicate an episode to a chapter that Carla Ruckert wrote in her book, The Choice, and some additional material on the lighthouse level. This level, as Carla describes it, is the combination of the indigo and violet ray level on how we can use this level and use it in work in consciousness. There's a lot of information in both the raw material and quo material about the indigo and violet rays. And this information is very important in your own spiritual growth and understanding of the law of one material and your transition to a light worker, utilizing your upper chakras and energy centers. Carla begins by explaining, giving a quote from Quo in 2007. You sit in the middle of a torus, shall we say, of created light that is your interface with all that there is. This is the essence of the indigo and the violet rays, beyond all the techniques of the discipline of the personality, beyond any detail, skill, or technique. There is this one overriding essence of connection between energies that are different in a profound way. Energies that, when put together, create of you a true and powerful lighthouse. In this episode, we look at the indigo and violet rays of the energy body. We are looking at them together. Because in many ways, they work together to create the player's interface with the enhanced game board. Before we talk about the indigo and violet rays separately, I would like to take a look in overview of these two energy centers given in the quote above. In working with our lower chakras, our concern is to keep the energy pathways unblocked into the heart chakra. We are not reaching upwards to the top of the energy body for inspiration, but simply keeping the pathway of the energy body clear for that infinite love light energy from the creator that enters the energy body at the red ray chakra at the bottom of the spine and exits the energy body through the violet ray chakra at the crown of the head. We especially want that energy to be clear up to the heart. The opened heart chakra will give even a beginning player the opportunity to graduate. The higher chakras are very useful to the developing player but not essential for graduation. So keeping the heart open is job one. The indigo ray like the blue ray cannot work at all unless the heart is open and flowing. So when we work in the indigo and violet rays, we must keep the heart open. In indigo ray work, we are accessing the possibility of getting help from above for the first time. We are forming our intention to reach upwards through the indigo and violet rays and then through the gateway to intelligent infinity for specific inspiration from the world of spirit. I say specific inspiration to differentiate between the universal and unconditional guidance of green ray love and the specific specialized guidance from metaphysical sources. Only when we access our indigo and violet rays with clear intent can these sources enter our energy fields from the gateway to intelligent infinity. The Confederation suggests that we as individuals are living interfaces between third density earth reality with its many limitations and the unlimited world of the metaphysical or time space universe. We have the native ability to access this unlimited world by forming our intention to do so and then asking for inspiration and information. Using the indigo and violet rays to access the gateway to intelligent infinity is like choosing to open a computer program by clicking on its icon. Microsoft calls the computer mouse a human interface device. Little does Microsoft know that the term has a double meaning for the player. In our analogy, regarding the use of indigo and violet rays by a player, the icon itself is the gateway to intelligent infinity. We become able to click on that icon by choosing to move our mouse of intent and readiness to that icon. Our click on that icon opens the software of the metaphysical or time-space universe of time and space, and its menu becomes available for us. The menu one opens by going through the gateway to intelligent infinity includes items like meditation, prayer, and work in faith. The confederation calls the menu itself the discipline of the personality or work in consciousness. 
These items are found on the menu of many religious systems. However, the Confederation is not a religious group in the usual sense. It discusses these items assuming that we will be accessing the gateway from within our own internalized process of using energy lovingly and wisely, and this is possible regardless of our religious persuasions. In the quote above, we as energy bodies can't be seen to be dwelling in the midst of a donut or torus of energy. We pull in the love light energy from the bottom of the chakra system upwards. At the same time, we pull in light love energy through the gateway to intelligent infinity into the violet ray and down into our chakra bodies. This simultaneous action creates a meeting of the two energies and then their union. This union creates a pattern where the unified energies become a circle of light all around us, a cascading fountain that is endlessly replenished. This is the lighthouse effect. This action is what prayer, meditation, and other indigo ray activities help to facilitate. The player whose indigo ray and violet ray chakras are firing and whose intention is to ask for inspiration dwells in the midst of a cascade of light and love that connects the world of space slash time, the here and now, and the world of time space, the world of infinity and eternity. We will discuss what the Confederation material says about these two chakras. We will learn the basics of how the indigo and violet rays function and what issues they cover. Although we can graduate without ever accessing this gateway to intelligent infinity and simply keeping our hearts open, we can refine our play on the game board endlessly by using these last two chakras of the energy body. The Indigo Ray In session 15 of the raw material, Ra states the indigo ray balancing is quite central to the type of work which revolves around the spirit complex, which has its influx then into the transformation or transmutation of third density to fourth density. It being the energy center receiving the least distorted outpourings of love light from intelligent energy and also the potential for the key to the gateway of intelligent infinity. The indigo ray chakra is located at the middle of the forehead where some Hindus place a red dot, although Hindu women generally wear the red dot to indicate they are married and devoted to their husbands. The Hindu monk wears the red dot to indicate his focus upon his third eye, the eye of metaphysical insight. This latter meaning of the red dot is the one which is comparable with the Confederation's description of the indigo ray. This is also the location in our physical bodies of our pineal gland, a gland which scientists link to paranormal phenomena and the ability to be aware of subtle energies as well as to cycles of physical growth and development. The indigo ray is described by the Confederation as having a three-petaled or triangular shape for most people. The raw group notes that some adepts who have balanced the lower energies may create more faceted forms. Once we players have become skillful at keeping our hearts open, we will find it very helpful to move into this indigo ray and to do the work in consciousness that this human interface device makes possible. Indeed, a lifetime is too short to become truly skillful at using the indigo ray's vast resources. However, we can have fun practicing the violet ray. In another session, they ask Ra, could you tell me how each of the rays, red through violet, would appear in a perfectly balanced and undistorted entity? Ra states, I am Ra. We cannot tell you this, for each balance is perfect and each a unique. We do not mean to be obscure. Let us offer an example. In a particular entity, let us use an example, a wanderer. The rays may be viewed as extremely even red, orange, yellow. The green ray is extremely bright. This is, shall we say, balanced by a dimmer indigo. Between these two, the point of balance resides the blue ray of the communicator sparkling in strength above the ordinary. In the violet ray, we see the unique spectrograph, if you will, and at the same time, the pure violet surrounding the whole. This in turn surrounded by that which mixes the red and violet ray, indicating the integration of mind, body, and spirit. This surrounded in turn by the vibratory pattern of this entity's own density. This description may be seen to be both unbalanced and in perfect balance. The latter understanding is extremely helpful in dealing with other selves. 
the ability to feel blockages is useful only to the healer. There is not properly a tiny fraction of judgment when viewing a balance in colors. Of course, when we see many of the energy plexi weakened and blocked, we may understand that an entity has not yet grasped the baton and begun the race. However, the potentials are always there. All the rays fully balanced are there in waiting to be activated. The violet ray is basically a readout of our entire energy body. More than anything we do or say, it is an accurate and unbiased report on our present vibrational situation. If you've gone to your home improvement center to duplicate a paint color, you've seen the clerk take your sample and have an instrument read it. The instrument reads what colors are in the sample of paint and what the proportions of each color are within the sample. It prints out a report giving the formula for reproducing the same color. The clerk puts a supply of all the colors on the report into a machine and sets the machine according to the ratios in the report. The machine measures out the colors into a paint can. When the can is filled and shaken up so that the colors are blended, your color sample is reproduced. In a similar way, our violet ray gives us a report identifying who we are in terms of the color values of the chakras of our energy bodies. The confederation tells us they do not need to know our name since they can read our violet ray spectrographs. They say that this is a far more accurate way of identifying us than our names. Perhaps other people may have the same name as we, but our violet ray reading is unique. Each of our violet rays is different, the confederation says, and yet each one is perfect, perfect for us. We can use the violet ray for protection and for work in consciousness as we access the gateway to intelligent infinity, but we cannot do anything to or with the violet ray chakra itself. It is as it is, an up-to-the-minute report on who we are. It is our metaphysical id. The raw group puts it this way. The energy ingress ends with the indigo. The violet ray is a thermometer of indicator of the whole. The violet ray is located just above the crown of the head. Its shape is the thousand-petaled lotus, which yogis call sahasrara. They echo the confederation in their belief that this ray is the center of the contact with the creator. The violet ray is the most fixed of the chakras. The raw group says it is the sum of the mind-body-spirit complex distortion totality. As we penetrate this chakra, we enter that area which opens to us the sacred nature of even the most ordinary and everyday things and actions. Balancing the chakra rays. Ross states in session 41, each energy center has a wide range of rotational speed as you may see it more clearly in relation to color and brilliance. The more strongly the will of the identity concentrates upon and refines or purifies each energy center, the more brilliant or rotationally active each energy center will be. It is not necessary for the energy centers to be activated in order in the case of the self-aware entity. Thusly, entities may have extremely brilliant energy centers while being quite unbalanced in their violet ray aspect due to lack of attention paid to the totality of experience of the entity. The key to balance may then be seen in the unstudied, spontaneous, and honest response of entities toward experiences, thus using experiences to the utmost, then applying the balancing exercises and achieving the proper attitude for the most purified spectrum of energy center manifestation in violet ray. This is why the brilliance or rotational speed of the energy centers is not considered above the balanced aspect or violet ray manifestation of an entity in regarding harvestability for those entities which are unbalanced, especially as to the primary rays, will not be capable of sustaining the impact of the love and light of intelligent infinity to the extent necessary for harvest. Although the Confederation notes the importance to the player of using the indigo and violet ray chakras for work in consciousness, such as meditation and prayer, the Confederation does not recommend plunging into a program of these activities while neglecting the lower chakras as a way of becoming more harvestable. Their emphasis is always on balancing the entire chakra body system. There are a number of spiritual teachers I've seen that recommend that balance is not important, such as Tail Swan. 
but it is in your own regard that balance may be essential and Ra says that it is. I personally know four people who had bad trips on LSD in their youth. They report it to have been a very uncomfortable experience. It felt as though a hole had been blown in their minds. The reason that this happens and the reason that it is unwise to pursue higher awareness through drug use is that the person uses the drug to attain a pure and less distorted level of light and love than is natural for him. Often he attains it, but he does not have a sufficient amount of balance in his energy to sustain the experience of this state for long. Under the influence of the drug, his energy body crashes as the impact of intelligent infinity blows his system, just as an electrical line blows when it receives a power surge in excess of its ability to run the power. Using drugs is rather like inviting lightning to strike one's energy body, one is liable to be fried. The Confederation recommends a safe way to work on balancing the chakras and becoming sturdy and stable enough to open and use the indigo ray and run higher current. They suggest looking at our thoughts and reactions during our everyday activities. They do not suggest tinkering with these thoughts and reactions. Whatever we are doing and thinking has its own rightness. They do suggest reviewing these thoughts and reactions each evening before going to bed. This balancing technique, as they call it, is fairly simple. The player is asked in this exercise to sit down and enjoy a few quiet moments at the end of the each day. During this time, the player thinks back over the day's activities. What thoughts has he had? What issues arose? Did he get angry? Was he very happy? As he looks over each distortion, for that is what the Confederation calls all of our thoughts and feelings, he asks himself if that was a balanced thought or feeling in terms of allowing him to remain with his open heart. If any catalyst has caused a distortion which closes the heart, even momentarily, the Confederation suggests working with that catalyst to reopen the heart and to rebalance the system in the following way. 1. First, the player remembers each experience in its original, distorted form. He even emphasizes or revs up the reaction or emotion which has been experienced, so he can experience the feeling again very clearly and consciously. 2. Then he asks himself what the opposite of this feeling is. He allows himself to become as overwhelmed with the experience of this opposite feeling as he was with the original feeling. For instance, if he has felt dislike, he first accentuates the feeling of dislike by recalling the episode which caused him to feel that emotion. Then he invokes the feeling of love, which is the opposite of dislike, and lets it sweep over him. This exercise is intended to balance the player's original distortion as he re-experiences it and then re-experiences its opposite dynamic. Generally, this exercise lifts the heavy weight of the original emotion and places it in context with the whole range of emotions and thoughts. It places the player at some distance from the original reaction and enlarges his perspective. And it lets him know that his issues and what they are. He gets to know himself better each time he does this as he leaves the balancing exercise. He'll usually find that his heart has opened. The Confederation suggests valuing the chakra system in a holistic way. To their way of thinking, it is just as important to have a strong red ray as it is to have a strong green ray. It is just as important to have a strong orange ray as it is to have a strong blue ray. And it is just as important to have a strong yellow ray as it is to have a strong indigo ray. What the player is working towards is having a chakra system that is open and harmonious within its entire self so that he can move up and down the chakra system from one chakra to another easily as the occasion requires. I take their advice seriously when I channel. I ask for help in setting my energy body to a balanced configuration which is like the safe setting one can choose when operating a program on the computer. I deliberately dim down the stronger chakras until I feel the whole system is in balance and very stable, and then I ask for the highest and best contact I can carry with that safe setting. I have no desire to blow my system. Those of Quo say, it is impossible to do work in consciousness before you have begun to have a holistic view of your energy, valuing every aspect of your feelings. What you're attempting to do in opening the heart is not to leap from the heart into indigo ray, simply to find yourself able to use the resources of the heart chakra, which make work in consciousness ever more possible. As that heart not only opens, but is persuaded by 
the constant tuning of the individual to stay open more and more. Finally, there is a habitual default setting of open heart and dependence upon the concept of love and a need to be a part of the principle of love and light upon planet Earth. In such a way shall you be able to keep your system open and ready to speak the words of love, to sing the melodies of wisdom, and to reach out hand to hand and heart to heart to each other as you practice being one in love. As players, we'll be drawn to spend time working with the items on the menu of the gateways to intelligent infinity which the activated indigo ray makes possible. And that's good. However, it is vital to remember to continue to tune and balance the whole chakra system, even as we explore techniques such as meditation, prayer, inspirational reading and reflection, and all the other items on the gateways menu. I stress this because many players who have become advanced in their metaphysical practices run into trouble or become burned out. The culprit is often there devaluing the worth of their lower chakras. This throws them off balance and the whole system starts to shut down just as it would under the influence of drug use. The items on the gateway menu are potent. Fortunately, when the balancing and tuning of the energy body is done to stabilize the energy flow, the wiring naturally becomes stronger and it is safe to work in consciousness. By all means, use the various gateway techniques I described, but use caution and always recall that it is keeping an open heart and moving from that unconditional love that the player brings himself successfully to graduation. The KISS motto of Alcoholics Anonymous really applies here. The phrase stands for keep it simple stupid. And that is what the skillful player will always do. Keep it simple. Remember the basics and only work with these techniques of indigo and violet ray to the extent that they help you by your own judgment without throwing you out of balance. They are the icing on the cake. Do not give them too much importance. Unconditional love is the name of the game. Indigo ray blockage the usual suspects. In a channeling from 2000, those of Quo say it is important to note that the energy system of the mind, body, and spirit of the complex of energies cannot be manipulated beyond certain limits. That is, if there is a blockage in the lower three energy centers which have to do with survival, the way the self regards the self or relates to other entities one at a time, and the way the self relates to the groups of third density such as the work, environment, and the family, then the power of the one infinite creator that enters the body an infinite supply cannot come into the heart center with full energy. There are many ways to distort, block, or confuse these lower energies. Each is working with the concept of self, with the concept of self in relationship, and with concept of self in groups in ways that distort and filter that energy. And each being unique is doing that distorting and partially blocking in her own way, and therefore each has what this instrument calls a knot to untangle that is unlike anyone else's knot, has the confusion to unravel that is not precisely like anyone else's confusion. The Confederation material suggests that the three most common sources of indigo ray blockages are judgment, fear, and unworthiness. Let's look at judgment first. We have a keen sense of justice. Although we observe repeatedly that our world is not always a just place, we enjoy feeling that we live in a world of stable values. Most of us have been given the Ten Commandments in Sunday school. We know not to murder, steal, covet, tell lies, or disrespect our parents. However, our day-to-day -day life offers us many chances to do the right thing that are not covered by the general truisms of the Ten Commandments. For instance, we might do everything required of us in a relationship, but at the same time we might hold resentment at having to do that. Then we might judge ourselves as lacking because we have had a bad attitude. There are as many ways to fall short of our own ideals as there are grains of sand along the seashore. The seduction of self-judgment is its tidiness. We like to know where we stand. We like to feel justified in our actions and opinions. And so we judge ourselves and others endlessly. We tend to keep books, credits, and debits of behavior and debt attitude. It is as though we feel spiritual evolution is linear and consists of chalking up more credits than debits. Yet the opposite is true. Spiritual evolution is qualitative, not quantitative. It runs on the energy of forgiveness and acceptance, not scorekeeping. It is inevitable that we will repeatedly fall short of our ideals. It comes with being human. And it is good to note these lapses from self-perceived perfection. As players, we are always on the lookout for ways to make more skillful choices. 
These errors are the grist for our mills of self-improvement. However, if our self-judgment lingers beyond the sincere desire to learn from our mistakes, then that self-judgment is likely to become toxic. Too much self-judgment closes the energy pathway into the heart. The player's goal is to keep the heart open. Self-judgment has to go. The Confederation does not draw a picture of a God of judgment. The Old Testament's vengeful Jehovah is not to be found. The Confederation's infinite creator does not keep score. Instead, it loves us endlessly. It loves us exactly the way we are. The Confederation suggests that we're in charge of our own judgment both during life and after its ending. We are responsible for forgiving ourselves and starting over when we find ourselves in error. And we are responsible for walking the steps of light during graduation and choosing exactly within which intensity of light we are most comfortable. If the matter of judgment is left in our hands, then we have the capacity for being harsh or gentle with ourselves. We can keep score and find ourselves wanting or we can forgive and begin again whenever we find ourselves in error. The Quo group says, It is your challenge to find ways to open the heart to the present moment and the love therein. You shall fail according to your cruel judgment again and again. We ask you to know deeply and surely that each mistake, each error, each missed opportunity is a gift to the one infinite, just as much as each moment when you judge yourselves to be, as this instrument would say on the beam or in the groove, clumsy or graceful, awkward or flowing, your spirit is utterly beloved. In order for us as players to do work in consciousness, then we need to focus on the love in the moment. And if we do err, which we certainly will do time and time again, we need to engage clearly and consciously in self-forgiveness. We need to clear away the toxic energies of self-disappointment and disapproval and come back to our own open hearts. Another frequent source of blockage is fear. A lot of our fears are bound up in our wanting to feel safe. We may, for instance, fear intimacy because we have been hurt in a previous relationship. We may not want to explore our own motives in doing key things because we fear what we shall find. We as players will almost inevitably feel fear as we get to know ourselves better once we start uncovering our own shadow side. How can we accept and love those dark parts of our personality that would break the Ten Commandments happily in pursuit of our goals? It is only when we remember the Confederation's assertions that we are all things whatsoever in creation and that it is inevitable that the full circle of being contains the entire shadow side given to human nature can we move forward fearlessly. Perhaps the most common fear among us is that we will not make the grade and graduate. As we wake up and get used to the game board, we will hit brick walls from time to time. We will not know how to go forward. The Quo principle says, We would speak of two minds and two hearts. The first mind is the mental mind. In it, there can only be mentally feared obstacles. For one who is an adventurer within its own mind, the barriers of fear do not arise. The Quo's second mind is the heart. The player who is an adventurer within its own mind thinks from the open heart. The open heart does not fear that it may do the wrong thing. It follows the energies and impulses of love and acts fearlessly, and that is the attitude the player wants to capture, fearlessness. The process of spiritual awakening and maturing is a bit like panning for gold. We players will sift through a lot of sand and silt as we seek to find the gold which lies within our deeper natures. It is a messy process sometimes but this is not something to fear. Again, fear closes the pathway to the heart. As players, we know that when we encounter fear within ourselves, we need to work with that fear until we are once again free of its constricting effects. We need to get back into our open hearts. The third most frequent cause of blockage which keeps us from doing indigo ray work is unworthiness. Our society gives us many ways to feel less than worthy. We are too thin, too fat, too old, too young, and so forth. Yet the Confederation assures us that we do not accept these feelings of unworthiness as real. 
Quo says, each entity will have deeply personal areas where the energy is drawn and leached away from the metaphysical pursuits. And it is to these rough places of the personality that the worker in consciousness will go in thought, not to condemn the self, not to attempt with the knife to exercise surgically parts of the self, but rather to see these places as places where the earth is covering the jewels in such a deep way that the focus of service and learning is shifted to trivial concerns. In no way do we recommend that entities simply cut out those activities which the self considers beneath metaphysical notice. Rather, we would encourage each to come into a vision or an attitude concerning the self that is epitomized in the phrase, My Funny Valentine. We find the words to this song very pointed in this regard. My funny Valentine, your looks are laughable, unphotographable, yet you're my favorite work of art. This is how you may see yourself as a spiritual entity, as a funny but very sweet work of art. This is the view of the mind of the heart, compassion and affection for the self just as it is. The heart is willing for the self to be a work of art rather than a set of ledgers with good deeds and recorded on one side and failings on the other. And the self being frequently perceived as being deficit and unworthy. We need as players to accept ourselves as worthwhile just as we are, even though at the same time, we're always striving to improve our moves on the game board. This self-acceptance joins with fearlessness and non-judgment in creating the right environment within our energy bodies for doing work in consciousness, using the indigo and violet rays to access the gateway to intelligent infinity. Resting within our open hearts, we are ready for further adventures. Revisiting the balancing exercises. In a 2003 session, Quo says, the places where energy is held in the energy body often have to do with the past and those things that are to all intents and purposes dead. Yet somehow the function of memory has enabled them to have a spurious and untrue life within an entity, which has for the most part moved from those stumbling block areas of misperception concerning the self. When the evening of the day comes, we have recommended that it is well to examine as one may the points which hooked one during the previous day's experience, either for happiness or for woe. Gaze into the way the mind works when it is triggered. Find those triggers, name them, get to know them. Begin accepting yourself for having them. Begin attempting to create for the self a safe place where these things can be looked at for however long they need to stay. In reality, much of getting to know the self is not pushing the self around as much as it is gently sitting around the campfire with all those different parts of self and allowing each to tell its story. In order to do work in consciousness, the work of keeping the energy body clear and flowing is central. The gateway to intelligent infinity does not open to those minds which are focused on patterns of thought which revolve around old grievances, lost dreams, or bitterly held memories. I repeat this here because the work of balancing out these bits of old material is necessary for the player if he wishes to move beyond the green ray chakras, unconditional love, and call down inspiration and information from above which may accelerate the path of his spiritual evolution. And it is hard to release old pain. Keeping oneself in balance during the process of getting to know the self is delicate work. The most helpful attitude is not of disgust when we find dark parts of the self, nor is the right attitude complacency and smugness with our shadow side. It is good simply to seek the truth and as we find it to submit it to the balancing process. Eventually we will find that our deeper selves are gradually integrated into our surface personalities naturally and organically as we continue to do this balancing work. The quo suggestion of sitting around a campfire with ourselves and letting all of our inner voices be heard in an atmosphere of loving acceptance is very apt and will produce results. Be sure when releasing old pain to thank it for the learning it has contained. When our minds are focused on gratitude and thanksgiving, our energy body relaxes and energy flows clearly and we are ready for what the Confederation calls the discipline of personality and the work in consciousness. There is some additional information in the Law of One material and Quo about advanced lighthouse work that I find very interesting. In 
A session in 2006, Quo says, the model of the energy flow through the energy body in space-time is that of a self-contained system. However, in the metaphysical view of this pipeline, while on the level of consensus reality or space-time, it is indeed a self-contained system. On the level of time-space, it is an open system. And in working towards graduation, the player can assume the energy body is a closed system and successfully achieve graduation using that assumption. Just as the physical body is basically a field of energy holding within it many lesser energy fields such as organs and systems, so the energy body can be seen as a field of energy holding within it lesser energy fields of the chakras. When the player has achieved the ability to stay within the open heart and to make positively polarized choices on a consistent basis, he's ready to face graduation with a serene mind. Using the gateway is not necessary for graduation. There are some other things that you can do, which are recommended by Quo. Working with the magical personality is one. The three ma aspects of the magical personality, power, love, and wisdom, are so called in order that attention be paid to each aspect in developing the basic tool of the adept, that is, itself. It is by no means a personality of three aspects. It is a being of unity, a being of six density, and equivalent to what you call your higher self. And at the same time, it is a personality enormously rich in a variety of experience and subtlety of emotion. The three aspects are given that the neophyte not abuse the tools of its trade, but rather approach those tools balanced in terms of love and wisdom, and thus seeking power in order to serve. When most people think of magic, they think of the sleight of hand tricks, the stage magician who waves a wand and pulls animals out of hats. That's not the magic of the confederation, nor is it the nature-based non-polarized Wicca or nature magic. Wicca practices can be deeply moving and their healing is a positive polarity, but Wicca moves to the rhythms of nature. Nor is it the very negatively polarized black magic, which is derivatively copycat to white mag magic, with everything done backwards to the white magical practice. Nor is it the offshoot of black magic, which can be called cookbook magic, a negatively polarized craft where potions made up of arcane ingredients are intended to be used to influence people or events. Nor is it sympathetic magic, also negatively polarized, where a witch uses a piece of hair or a personal article to invoke some change in the target. Rather, the Confederation speaks of what is generally called white ritual magic, which is a tradition which stems from the mystical school of medieval Christianity. Unlike other forms of practice which share the same name of magic, white magic is highly positive polarized and is based upon the invocation of some aspect of the Creator. There is nothing physical about this practice. All the work is done in the metaphysical. When Don Elkins questioned Ra about white ritual magic, he defined the magician's skill as the ability to create changes in consciousness at will and asked if this definition was acceptable. The Ra group responded, This definition may be better understood by referring back to an earlier query within this working having to do with the unmanifested self. In magic, one is working with the one's unmanifested self in body, in mind and spirit, the mixture depending upon the nature of the working. These workings are facilitated by the enhancement of the activation of the indigo ray energy center. The indigo ray energy center is fed as all are energy centers by experience but far more than others is fed by what we call the disciplines of personality. This brings us back to the quote which began this, the magical personality is one in which the player has disciplined the personality and done the work in consciousness necessary to have developed the faculties of power, love, and wisdom. The most familiar white magical invocation is the Christian sacrament of the Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion Ritual. This is the invocation of the presence of Jesus the Christ by a priest. Once the priest has invoked the presence, he shares it with his congregation as he distributes the bread and the wine which has now become full of the essence of the Christ. The belief is this transforms the partakers into a brand new being who may then begin a new life full of the Christ consciousness. To learn more of this white magical tradition, the player is encouraged to read Ra's discussion of it in the four books of the Law of One as well as in the works of William E. Butler, a British magician of the 20th century. However, I would like to discuss one aspect of Ra's group and Butler's work on magic, which is the development of the player's magical personality. What is our magical personality? The Confederation suggests that it is another name for what they call the higher self. They suggest that we each have a higher self. This higher self is a version of ourselves from what we 
would think of as the future using space-time terms. Quo describes the higher self this way, The I am that is the core of you learns of love, of wisdom, and of loving, wise compassion. When these lessons have been learned to the extent that they are without significant distortion, you turn and, reaching through time, offer yourself a, a gift. In sixth density, there is eventually at mid-density a point at which there is no longer any polarity. It is when the spirit has reached this point, full of unity, wisdom, and compassion, the sixth density self places within the third density self, in the deep mind, the biases which are to come, the destiny which has been fulfilled, the beauty and the exactitude of service to others. Therefore, the magical personality, or the higher self, is the last vestige of the self which contains polarity. And as you deal in this world illusion grounded in polarity, this gift can be extremely helpful. What these menu choices of the gateway have in common is that they require the player to move carefully and consciously into his magical personality. Once the channeling, healing, or lovemaking session of working is completed, the player consciously relinquishes his magical personality. To invoke his higher self or magical personality, the player sets his will and intention. He can put on a ring or some other token which, to him, symbolizes this deliberate shift from his everyday personality to his magical personality. Or he can simply make a gesture, physical or visualized, which is what I do. I imagine myself putting on a magical robes by pulling them down over my head. When my session of working is complete, I visualize taking the robes off over my head. Carla also talks about the use of ritual, the use of channeling as a part of uh, accessing these energy centers, and the psychic greeting. The psychic greeting is when you have greetings by an entity that wishes to channel and you challenge that psychic greeting. And then psychic protection, which is discussed as a ritual of protecting yourself and the different ways of doing that. There's so many different aspects to this, even a discussion of sacred sexuality. The bottom line is the upper two chakras are not essential to graduating and moving to the new earth, but can be very powerful if you want to be of service and understanding yourself. And if you are in the activity of changing a reality or healing others, then these particular energy centers will invoke intelligent energy and intelligent infinity. Many of the things she talked about, I really resonated with. It's easy as somebody that talks uh, about spiritual stuff all the time. I still struggle with a lot of stuff. You know, I might get super angry and then I look back at myself and I, I judge myself unworthy because I'm ashamed of how angry I got. And then it closes my heart. I just recently had something like that happen. And this is a reminder that you're human. It's natural. And so when I go back and look at that angry incident, I balance it and I imagine the opposite, utter love. Very easy for me to do. And I am able to essentially revise the situation, revise the event. So I think in many ways, the exercise of balancing is like a revision. You're going back, you're looking at your emotions, the hard part is revising things to the opposite. So if you have a loving experience, experiencing the opposite. If anybody has tried these balancing exercises, which I have mentioned before, or anybody that studies the law of one, I'd like to know if, if it has helped you in any way. I'd like to know if the energy body discussion by Ra has helped you in any way. I've discussed it in other episodes. And in, the, in particular, Carla's discussion of it is very interesting. She's... Uh, both bringing in information from Quo and others, and does indicate that the sexual experience, including the orgasm, are of a spiritual nature and are part and related, or can be related, to those upper energy centers as you awaken your magical personality and your higher self. So we will certainly go into this further in other episodes, but it's an introductory idea of the lighthouse level and the things that you need to know about it based on the law of one material and quo. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.